Good morning. I'm Tom Coons. I'm the director of the Minority Research Office here at the State Capitol. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, well, we are now past the midway point of one of the truly unprecedented legislative sessions of all time. So we thought we'd put some of our brightest state legislators to the test with what we call the two-minute drill. So I'm here with a group of our best leaders in every sense of the word. It's State House Majority Leader Della Abilotti. Good morning, Representative Bilotti. Good morning. Uh, State House Minority Leader Representative Val Okimoto. Okimoto, Representative Okimoto, how are you today? Good morning, Tom. I'm well. How are you? Uh, good. Thank you. And State Senate Majority Leader Jay Clonny English. Senator English, good morning. Okay, so I think you know how this worked. We tried this out in our last <laughs> one hour special. And the positive public response we got was just so overwhelming. A lot of cards and emails still coming in. Um, a lot of fan mail for me. Here's how it works. I'll throw out a question, and you'll have two minutes as a group to discuss it. Um, so we, let's go to the first question. And when you, we're all ready to move on to the next one, we'll just say next, and we'll go to that next question. I'll jump in with the next question. Everybody got it? Okay. So here we go. Rep Bilotti, we'll start with you. The 2021 session will... What movie title best describes this current session? Contagion. Mm, contagion. Why is that? And so in that movie, they're dealing with a worldwide pandemic. It's loosely based on SARS um, and uh, the bird flu. So factually, it mirrors a lot of what's happened over the last year. Um, luckily, we haven't had the kind of social dystopia, although we might feel like we're living in that. But I think that... Um, it really encapsulates for me this session because even though we are starting to see glimmers of hope, we are seeing a vaccine coming around, we are seeing positive developments, um, the contagion of COVID-19 is still the thing that is really, really driving this session and these discussions. And so even though it feels like it may be receding, it is still very much a part of what this legislative session is, is about. And it will always be about that, I think, as we look back on it 10 years from now. How we dealt with <laughs> contagion is going to be the, the the thing that we talk about. How about you, Senator English? Well, I, I don't think it's a it's a particular movie. I just think it's called Shit's Creek. Did you see that series? <laughs> they went from having five hundred billion dollars to having uh, a few dollars, having to move out of a mansion uh, bigger than you know yeah. an airport lobby into um, a little uh, motel room, and of course, Moira's one-liners um, sums everything up. So I think Shit's Creek describes it very, very well. <laughs> oh, that is spot on, sir. That's spot on. How about Representative Okimoto? Okay, so I'm going to cheat because I couldn't decide. So I have I have two titles based on just the title. So the mask, and also ten things I hate about you for this oh. for this session. But but based on movies, the quote that came to my mind came from the movie Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And I feel like that is this year. You know, this is my third session. And, you know, you're, you've heard from the freshman legislators earlier in the in the, in the the show and how your first session is kind of crazy. And then so my second ses session was COVID, which was also unprecedented. And now I have my third session, on, you know, on way. And I've learned that you never know what to expect. So Hopefully one day I'll right. be as well versed as Rep Baladi and Senator English. But right now I'm just expecting the unexpected as I go through each day. All right. That was fantastic. I love that. All right. So pandem pandemic pandemonium. Representative Okimoto, we'll start with you. Should Hawaii loosen its COVID restrictions? Well, you know, I feel like we're on the right track. I think with our current mayor, I think he's doing a good job. Um Lightening things. I'm glad that sports is opening up. I grew up playing sports on my home island of Kauai, and that's something that's very important. I think there's value to that, as well as you know academics. But I'm grateful that we're moving in the right direction. I've always been an advocate to open up our economy as as safely and as prudently as we can. So I would like to see more things that we can do. I know Rep. Board in the previous segment mentioned our beloved Love's Bakery that has had to close down. So I think we still have a lot to do, but I think we're moving in the right direction because we're slowly and safely doing things and the vaccine has helped in, in getting us to that point. Representative Bilotti. I will say yes and echo everything that Representative Okimoto said. I will add one caution though, as we open up, and this is really important. So I say this every time I can, it's still gonna be important to mask, uh, social distance and not gather in large groups uh, and to practice good social hand washing and social hygiene. Um, th those 
you know, as we've seen other places open up and really relax restrictions, they are now seeing their third and fourth waves, and then they're actually going back into lockdown. And that's absolutely the thing that I do not want to do. So I think we should open up as we're doing, as Mayor Blangiardi is doing on our island. And then, um, but, but we have to do our part as citizens. How about you, Senator English? So just to be clear, the question is, should we re relax the, um, the restrictions, right? No, I don't think so. You know, people are talking about um, when we open up. I'm sorry, we're open. We're at we're at uh, over 20,000 people a day. Before the pandemic, we're about 30,000 people a day. Everything is, you know, people are coming. Um, this whole idea of people being confused, I'm sorry. If they can figure out to buy a ticket, make a reservation, get over here. They can also figure out how to make a reservation on our system, get the code, and do whatever's needed to come here. So we are open. That's the part people don't realize. We are open. We're full swing. I'm in Hana today. Um, the highway is clogged and people parking all over. And, um, you know, all the problems we had from before the pandemic are back. So I think um, keeping them the way they are and even uh, making them a bit stricter in some areas would help us to keep our very low numbers. And that's the most important thing. Excellent. Can I can I put a quick can I put a quick plug for our state and how I love you know the people of Hawaii because I think is that okay Tom if I jump yeah, back in it's okay yeah there's no know, rules I have been one to to like mandates you guys I grew up a lot you know my father's learned that about me I don't like mandates however and and if you ask me I, I look forward to the day when we never have to wear a mask again I'll be honest my daughter hates it but I think in Hawaii one of our benefits is we don't have to kind of um, adopt the things from the mainland. We have a special culture here. So I, I, we are raised, you think about your kupuna, you think about your neighbors, you think about your friend, family and friends. And if putting on a mask will help with that, you know, so that we can get our keiki back to school and get our businesses open, then I support that. I, I, and like I said, I look forward to the day when we don't have to do that. But in Hawaii, I hope that we can remember why we're special. It's the aloha spirit. And so if anything that we can do to help our communities, I support that. Excellent, excellent. All right, so of course, this session has been different than, as I said, but than any other. And so we've gone to a lot of virtual testimony. So we call this segment uh, Virtual Insanity. Senator English, uh, what's better, in person or virtual testimony for your all those committees that you're in? Well, I like, I like the virtual. I mean, today I'm sitting in Hana, it was just flooding. I have Lake Nirvana in my front yard because it appears during the floods <laughs> and then it disappears. I like the Buddhist philosophy of Nirvana, but. Um, you know, so the thing is that I, I've had more meetings than ever before because you don't have the travel time. So it'll take me a day to get to Honolulu. Um, I'm participating in all the meetings here more than we did before. So for this time, it works very well. I don't think we'll ever go back to what it was. I think we're going to have a hybrid system at, when the pandemic is over. Um, the people in my district, people on Molokai, Lanai, Maui, uh, love this because they don't need to fly to Oahu, rent a car, drive to the Capitol to give a three-minute, four-minute testimony. They log in, they give their testimony, they continue with the day. So I think it's here to stay. I like the, the virtual, and I think it's only going to get better. Uh, Representative Bilotti? So if the question is either or, in-person or virtual, I have to say that right now, um, I, I was a big proponent for virtual, but I think I really like the in-person because the quality of the conversation, I think, is better in the hearing. Um, I think one of the things that we're finding on the House side, at least, is yes, we're getting lots of written testimony, but the actual remote virtual testimony is is not as robust as we thought we were going to have. So I think um, to echo what Senator English said, I think it, we are. I want to see something hybrid because it's going to give us that accessibility and reach across um, the the island state. But I think um, the quality hopefully will improve because I think people have to learn to engage. You know, we see our kids struggling at home, in home, in school learning or remote learning. We're we're struggling with remote testimony. So I think I think I like in person better for the interaction. I'm looking forward to continuing this project of kind of maybe a hybrid moving into the future. Okay, we're at Pokemoto real quick. Okay, real quick. I I agree. I, I've been in committee hearings where. Our, members from the neighbor islands were not able to participate because the communities were cut short. And I always had a soft place in my heart for the neighbor island people, out of islands who would come and they couldn't um, testify. So I think this is a great, um, you know, avenue resource for them. I, I also agree with Rep. Aladi. I do miss the in-person because I, I like to connect with people one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that there's value in having them in person. 
I do want to put a plug in, you know, I feel like our IT and our sergeants offices have done such a wonderful job in preparing our our rooms for us. I mean, Repilati and I were in a committee just the other day where we heard random voices over the, the microphone and, and Repilati gave her wonderful question but was not heard because for some reason her audio wasn't working. So there are hiccups along the way. I think, you know, there's there's humor in finding, um, uh, humor in those comical areas like watching the subtitles. I think that's another fun part of having <laughs> of having these virtual <laughs> meetings. But I, I do look, I, while I see the, the value of it, I also do look forward to having in person again. <laughs> All right. Uh, Repilani, uh, should students return to the classroom full time? Yes, they should, but we need to do it safely. So I think what I'm very eager to see is the new guidance that CDC is coming out with. Um, I think the more relaxed distance, three three feet, um, is, is going to be helpful. But again, it's still going to be they need, you know, kids are going to have to wear masks in school. Um, they're going to have to have, you know, this, air purifiers or all those types of things that we see in our business um, settings, um, we're going to have to make sure they have those things with them. And so, yes, they need to go in there. I have two public school daughters. Um, I, the teachers are doing a tremendous job, but I will say probably the hardest thing for teachers right now is hybrid when they have some kids in school and then they're also teaching remotely. So even though I think there is uh, some concern, I think it, if we can do it safely, we, we got to get our kids in full time. How about you, Senator English? Um, if the teachers are vaccinated, if the students are vaccinated, um, <clears throat> if we, <clears throat> excuse me, if we have all the safety measures in place, yes, of course. Um, I think also that you know having a new superintendent will also give us the general guidance that's needed for all the schools so that they can assess which way to go. So that's what's been missing. You know, for example, in Hana, where I'm at right now, they had absolutely zero guidance from the uh, from Oahu. So they, they said, well, we, you know, we have no guidance. We're not sure what to do. Let's do some experiments. And every school did that. So I think some basic general guidance will be very helpful in the future. Okay, Rep Okimoto, you have about 30 I, seconds. I, I just, I agree with Rep Bellotti. I also have two daughters in the public school system and my youngest is a second grader. I, I understand, you know, the restrictions, I understand, but we need to get, especially our young Keiki back to school. She can't wait. She's so excited. She got to go to school today. I've never seen children more excited to be in school because they just miss it and they love seeing each other. And I did hear some concerns about, oh, they're not going to be able to restrain and hug each other. I will let you know, I have a, a second grader who understands. They, they've been given the guidelines. They understand this is a new world. I didn't grow up in this world and her sister didn't either, but they understand that you can't run and hug your friends anymore. But the fact that they can see their teachers and receive that one-on-one -on -one instruction, but also have social interaction, which I think is missing right now with our Kiki. Yeah, anything that we can do to promote that and support that, I do. I, I'm looking forward to when, you know, I think in two weeks, my daughter can go back to school every day. And I'm super grateful for the teachers and the principals that have made this happen. I, I'm a former teacher. You guys know how my heart is for teaching in the Keiki. So let's get the Keiki back into school safely. <laughs> so there's no good transition. Now, now I look at these questions. This is not a good transition. So uh, Rep, Rep Okimoto, should marijuana yeah. be legalized in Hawaii? Sorry about that. No. Well, I was able to I was able to go onto a PBS Insights show a few weeks ago talking about this, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. And I, I'm grateful for both sides that have shared their stances. Like I mentioned, I'm a mom and I'm a former teacher. No, we should not be legalizing marijuana here in Hawaii. I understand, you know, the 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 opposite side of what I see as uh, my stance is saying we need to generate revenue. The research has shown that the revenue that's going to be generated may not come in happen for years. And to me, as a fiscal conservative, I always outweigh the cost versus versus the benefit. And to me, this it, the cost will outweigh the benefits at this time. I don't see our law enforcement being prepared. In fact, they have concerns about that, not to mention it's still a, against, you know, federal guidelines. Um, and we need to also protect the keiki. I, I can't stress that enough. I just feel like when we look at how our state is not ready for our infrastructure, our law enforcement, and the impacts of not knowing what's going to happen to our kiki. I, I have great concerns. So no, I'm not in support of that. How about you, Senator English? Uh, yes, with strict controls, um, like, like we do with alcohol. Yeah. Um, we have more than half the states that have legalized some form of marijuana. <clears throat> and it's just a matter of time before the federal government does. FDA has already approved a number of medical uses, which then uh, makes the scheduling of it contradictory, right? So uh, it has medical value. Therefore, 
you know, I think uh, in the future will be legalized, but again, with strict controls. And Rep. Bilotti? Not at this time. I, for all of those reasons that Senator English said, I think if, if and when we do move into recreational legalized marijuana, we need to really spend the time like we did. It took us 20 years to get the dispensaries right, and we're still working on that aspect of it. So I think it's, it's not at this time. Okay. All right. Senator English, I can't, after your movie title, I can't wait to hear this. Uh, what, in a word, what, it's, what is it like to be a political leader in the year 2021? Insane. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Well, he didn't so say anything more. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's fine. Rep Bilotti. Right, you know, so there it is. <laughs> How about I you, Rep Bilotti? You know what? I have to do this. I have to uh, tip my hat to Senator English and Rep Okimoto. You folks are way better at this than I am. Like, I think I'm like approaching these questions as too, too, too focused. So my word was um, flexibility is what we need. Uh, I mean, and, and I couldn't turn that into like an adjective. So I love Senator English once. It is. It's insane. It's we can't. You, no one has ever prepared can be prepared for this. I would agree. How about Rep Okimoto? What do you think? My word, and this is indicative of my situation and get, getting to the point I am now, is galvanizing. Definitely galvanizing. But I will put a plug. My pigeon word, the first word that came to my mind was nuts. Like my kawaii girl pigeon came out like <laughs> nuts with a Z at the end. So it matches what Senator English said. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's jump ahead to the next question. Rep Bilotti, should a tax increase be approved for those households that make over $200,000? No. And I think, um, you know, we were looking at all these range of things. I think the situation has totally changed now. And so we have to be adaptable. Is tax increases something that is always a tool in our, um, our, our toolbox? Yes. But I think right now, given what we're seeing from the federal government, I think we can do things other than tax. Uh, at, at that level of 200000 is very... Um, in, in Hawaii, uh, you, you'd be surprised. I, I feel like that that is a very low threshold. So it certainly would have to be something much, much higher. Um, if you're talking about taxing $5 million personal income, maybe. But we're not that. We're not talking about that. And I don't want to waste our time on that. What about you, Rep. Okimoto? I want to just say that I, I don't know how it feels to make $200,000, but I, I support those. And <laughs> maybe Rep. Bilotti knows more than I do. So this wouldn't affect me personally, but I am in opposition of it as well. We actually did a, a joint caucus statement, which was really nice um, that we were able to come together. We should be incentivizing you know, our residents to seek high quality jobs. We already have a brain drain with our doctor shortage. We should not be penalizing or disincentivizing these, you know, locals from going into these professions that will compensate for them properly. So I am in opposition of it. It'll hurt our businesses and it's going to hurt our, our local economy. Okay, real quick, Senator English. Well, you know, I'm I'm split down the middle on this one because I can see both sides of it. Um, we need, you know, we need to have some revenue sources, and that's the problem. If we don't have it. Uh, then, you know, then we have to cut it and people complain about the cuts. So it's half of one, half of the other. I think that, um, you know, some tax increases are will be necessary and how it's done um, is the key. So, you know, the question itself, taxing those over 200,000, it's really so broad that, I, you know, it's hard. I can't answer it yes or no. It's all in the details. Okay, last question. We're running out of time. But thank you, each of you, for your time. I know you guys are very busy. What's your favorite place to eat in your district? And I want to know, know what you order when you go. How about you, Senator English? We'll start there. Um, well, since I'm home in Hana, I would say Makai Cafe, which is one of the food trucks in Hana. Uh, they have some of the best food that you can imagine. It's all Most of it is locally grown, but they have an outrageous um, uh, fish and chips and fish burger. It's, it's uh, I'm sorry, fish and chips and, yeah, fish burger. It's locally caught fish. So you, you, sometimes it's um, marlin, sometimes it's mahi-mahi, sometimes it's ahi. Oh. But really thick pieces, oh. really juicy, really good. Makai Cafe in Hala. And Rep. Alati? Sure Shot Cafe is my favorite coffee shop in my district. Um, it's a favorite for Roosevelt kids. My daughter loves going there. They have the best scones, caramel scones, oh. and then my daughter loves the cinnamon sugar toast. Oh, nice. And Rep. Okimoto? I got to put a plug in for Poke Slap and Milani restaurant in my district, but actually my favorite go-to when I'm in a bind is Foodland because they have the best salt and vinegar chicken wings and Poke. 
My favorite. But if you ask my eight-year-old, her favorite restaurant is McDonald's. We probably could have been there more than other places. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Time's up. I want to thank uh, each of you, Senator English, R Rep. Lottie, and Rep. Ogimoto. You guys go out and have a good day. And thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Take, thank you. Go, I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol. So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.